On this episode of Lomofa Classic, we'll be replacing the fuel filter on an XJS. Welcome back to Loam with a Classic. And if you're new to my channel, I hope that you stuck around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week. And now we'll be changing the fuel filter on a Jaguar XJS. This is a piece of maintenance that's often forgotten or neglected on these cars. And I think it's because the fuel filter is a little bit hidden. It's a little bit out of the way. It's in the trunk. It's behind the spare tire. I'll show you in a second right where it is. And it's not difficult to change. It's just a little bit of a pain. You have to be cautious because if you cause this fuel spill in the boot, you're going to stink up the car. So it's not like on a modern car with fuel filters under the car or maybe in the engine bay and it makes it a lot easier because if you make a fuel spill and make a mess, it doesn't really matter. It just falls on the ground. You can just wipe it off. But here, if you're unlucky, it gets soak up into the carpets and your car will stink of fuel forever. If you stick around until the end of the video, I'm going to take the old filter into my workshop and open it up so we can see what it looks like inside. And I'll show you why you should also change these filters regularly. So now I'll show you where the fuel filter is located, how to get to it, and some tips and tricks on how to not make such a huge mess. On the XJS, the fuel filter is in the trunk behind the spare tire. I've already removed the cover for the spare tire. I've loosened the nut here that holds it in place. Then you can just lean it forward and simply lift the spare tire out of the way. And now everything is exposed. Here is the fuel filter, two hose clamps, clamp that holds the filter in place. Here's the fuel sender if you need to get to that. So now I'm going to show you what tools you'll need to get this off without making a huge mess. Here is everything you'll need to change that fuel filter. A couple screwdrivers to get those hose clamps off and to get the bracket off from the bulkhead some type of container to catch any fuel spill and to put the filter in when you take it off from the car so you don't get any fuel on your paint. Uh, a couple of clamps to clamp off the fuel lines. These are really great, really cheap uh, things to get, so highly recommend getting those. Uh, of course, you'll need a new fuel filter. I'll put the link down below so you can get the correct one for the car. Uh, some type of rag to catch up any fuel that spills. And one of these. I highly recommend that you get one. It's a special plier for getting fuel hoses off. Works really well on spark plug boots on the V12 as well. I'll put a link down below where you can pick one of these up. They're a really great tool for these type of jobs. So now let's get that fuel filter off. Start by clamping off the fuel line. You can move any thing to the side so you get good grip. Clamp it off one on each side. If the car has run recently, then of course there will be pressure in the fuel system. Then you can remove the relay for the fuel pump, crank the engine over for a bit, it might catch on fire, and then stall immediately, and you'll get rid of any excess fuel pressure. But still, have a rag handy, because some fuel might come out. Now you can start disconnecting these fuel hose clamps here. Once they're loose, you can just move them out to the side. And then you can loosen up the two screws up here that holds the clamp, that holds the fuel filter in place. Now the fuel filter is loose in that clamp. Grab these pliers and just loosen off the hose ends a little bit. Just grab it like this, wiggle it a bit. And now it's all ready to come out. So be ready with that catch can and any rags. See, a little bit of fuel dribble there. Not really much at all. Now that filter is full of fuel, so be really careful when you lift it out. Hold off the ends and get it away from the car. Now you can simply install that new filter. Make sure to put it in the right way. It will say in on one side and out on the other. If it doesn't, just put it the same way the other one was. Slide it in there. Hook up the two hoses.
tighten up the hose clamps. Make sure it's completely tight. Tighten up the two screws by the bulkhead that holds the filter in place. So now you've changed that fuel filter, there are a few things I recommend. Don't hook up your battery right away. You will create a small spark when you do so. There might be some fuel fumes left in the boot if you spilled some fuel. So don't do that, you don't wanna create that fire. Also, it's a good idea to leave the boot open for a bit to air out any of the fumes, just in case that will soak into any of the fabric here that you didn't remove uh, and create a fuel, fuel smell in your car. So leave it open for a bit. Also, don't put the spare tire back right away. Uh, start the car up first, you know, when you've waited for everything to air out and just check for leaks and make sure there are none before you put everything back. So you can have that little catch can or something similar underneath the fuel filter or a rag when you start it up the first time just to make sure there are no leaks at all. If there are, uh, don't drive the car, remedy everything and make sure you don't have a leak. Also have a look at your fuel hoses back here. If they're old and perished and if you're maybe a little soft and gooey, ruined by ethanol or something, just replace them. Now, because like I said, everything is right next to the battery. You don't want to create a fuel spill back here, which gets easily ignited by a spark back here. And then your car burns down, so please don't do that. Uh, if you haven't replaced your fuel hoses on the car, I'll put a link to a video up here where you can see how you replace them up front in the V, and that's extremely important to replace those because that will definitely burn your car to the ground. So I'll put a link to that video up here and a link to it down below as well. So now, like I promised, we'll head on over to the workbench. We'll cut that filter open, see what it looks like on the inside, how much uh, grime is in it, and see if the filter's been doing its job and stopping any particles from getting into the engine. So we're at the workbench, and after a bit of fighting with that filter, I finally got it apart for you guys. So here's the paper element that's inside that metal filter. It's just a roll of paper, just like an oil filter, basically and just open it up, and this is what it should look like, I would say. I mean, depending on how dark it is, is how long it's been in there for. But as you can see, there are no big particles at all. Any small shiny stuff is just from when I tried to cut the thing apart. So there are no rust fragments or anything like that. This is just normal debris from fuel. I mean, petrol or gasoline is not completely a completely clean fluid gets put in the old tank but there was no rust or anything Let's see if I have the uh, canister over here and I can show that here's a canister after I cut it open so you see no rust debris in there the brown stuff you see here is just the glue residue that held the filter in place so that's what it's supposed to look like really nice and clean inside and this is just an easy way to be able to tell what the condition of your fuel tank is. You don't have to cut your filter open. You should be careful when you cut it open. It's really sharp. And you should wait a couple days uh, like I did so all the fuel drains out of it. So this filter's done its job perfectly. Kept any tiny, tiny particles out of those delicate fuel injectors. Just kept the whole fuel system nice and clean. It definitely wasn't clogged or anything. So the tank looks good in this car. But still, it's one of the things you should just change out regularly. It don't cost a lot at all. It takes maybe 20 minutes to change it out. So, when was the last time you changed your fuel filter? Change it, take it apart, see what it looks like on the inside. Maybe you'll discover some things about your fuel system that you didn't know. Or maybe you'll just discover that everything is working just fine like this one and that you can keep on driving. And that's how you change the fuel filter on the XJS. It's really straightforward. The only trick is to not spill any fuel. You don't want that boot or trunk area to stink of fuel. That will just take away from the driving experience. Anyways, if you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. I put new videos every week. You can go to my channel down below and check out lots of videos on the white XJ12 behind me there, the XJS you saw today. And over there, there's an S-Type project car that I'm starting to restore. You can follow that restoration on this channel. So until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Living With A Classic. I'll see you soon.